Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about the Extraordinary Ability Green Card. Uh, on our homepage, uh, if you click the link, it will take us there. And the Extraordinary, green, extraordinary Ability Green Card, uh, which is the EB1A category, is extremely popular and desirable and difficult and the reason uh, a few reasons um, one of the two reasons that uh, it's so popular is that there's no offer of employment required there's no sponsorship required you're self-sponsoring on this uh, green card type uh, and the second reason is that the priority date is almost always current and let's take a look at what that means if you Google Visa Bulletin and go to the current Visa Bulletin, you'll see the first category is current among all countries. And this is particularly important uh, to those who were born in countries with a backlog. So India, China are the two top ones that come to mind. And then uh, some Central American countries in Mexico uh, as well, uh, but the majority of those that would really benefit from EB1A are uh, are those born in China and India. Because look at the backlog. Second category uh, is 10 years for India. So let's take a look at how to qualify for the EB1A self-sponsored green card. On our site, we have a couple assessment options. Uh, the first one is a, a multi-step uh, web form that you can uh, go through. It's about um, 10 different steps, and it asks you questions and you answer. And at the end, it provides us with information where we can give you an assessment. Um, this new link that we just added kind of allows you to do a self-assessment, and I'll show you how it works. Click on the link, and this is a PDF that you can download and save. I'm just going to use it um, in this window. Uh, but essentially, for almost, for most people, unless you are a Nobel Peace Prize winner, or uh, you've won an Oscar or an Emmy, uh, or a similar type of award, you're going to qualify based on um, three out of these uh, ten criteria. And so what you have to do is figure out which three you qualify for. So what we've done in this checklist, you can use this to, uh, to check. What we've done is put this together and once you finish it, you can take this to an attorney uh, or multiple attorneys and say, look, this is what I have. This is how I feel I qualify. Um, what do you think? Will you take my case? How much is it? And you have a little bit of leverage because um, you've done your homework and you're not starting from, from zero. So within each of these um, criteria, there are sub-criteria, and we'll go through them um, in kind of an overview fashion. Um, so let's look at the first one, evidence of receipt of a lesser nationally or internationally recognized prize or award for excellence. So for this criteria, these are the items that you want to gather if you feel that you qualify. If you can get all of them, then your chances of, of meeting this criteria are excellent. If you can only get a, one or two of them, uh, then it's not so excellent. Um, because the uh, officer, the adjudicating officer at USCIS, will likely issue a request for evidence asking for the rest. Uh, and again, you can kind of uh, download the PDF, make check marks. Uh, so you have this to um, support your petition. 
Uh, and we can see for uh, the receipt of a lesser nationally or internationally recognized prize or award for excellence, um, you'll want a, a, a copy of the a photograph of each prize or certificate, a copy of the public announcement, the press release, if that's applicable, uh, the criteria used to grant the prizes or awards. Very important. The more uh, limiting the criteria, obviously, the better. Uh, the significance of the award, reputation of the organization or panel granting the award, who's considered, how many are awarded each year, etc. Second criteria, evidence of membership and associations in the field in which, at which demand outstanding achievements to join. So this is very important. This is not, uh, they're not talking about memberships where you can pay a $50 annual fee and everybody can, can uh, uh, become a member. These are exclusive associations uh, where membership is limited to those who have been judged by their peers as having attained outstanding achievements in the field. So it's very important to distinguish that. Uh, and uh, very simply, if you meet that criteria, then you should be able to get the rest of the uh, evidence um, that the criteria has an exclusive application process and, uh, and other um, association details. That's number two. Let's go to uh, the next one. Evidence of published material about you in professional or major trade publications or other major media. So this, in order to qualify under this um, criteria, you'll need to provide evidence of articles, of materials, of interviews, etc. Uh, about you and show the actual article and then uh, publication details such as circulation, intended audience, etc. Next, evidence that you've been asked to judge the work of others, either individually or on a panel. And um, this is essentially um, providing evidence from uh, the event where you performed as a judge. The, letter of invitation, pictures of the event, maybe a thank you uh, from after the event from the event organizer. Those are um, acceptable forms of evidence. Next, evidence of your authorship. So of scholarly articles uh, in major media or professional media. And so if you are, um, well, let's go through them. Um, significant contribution to an article, contracts with companies using your products or licensed technology. Uh, patents will fall under this. So if you're an inventor, this is a perfect criteria for you uh, where you can provide evidence of your uh, authorship of the patent application and of the pat and, and that the patent has been granted. Next, uh, evidence that your work has been displayed at artistic exhibitions or showcases. Uh, if you select this category, you'll be required to provide evidence of your work in the field at artistic exhibitions or showcases. So this is primarily for artists and you can see each different criteria, and if you can meet those, then you can uh, select this option. Next, evidence of your performance of a leading or critical role in distinguished organizations. This is commonly used uh, in business. So if you head it up uh, an, uh, a unit, uh, a branch uh, of a uh, uh, distinguished organization, um, then you can qualify here uh, and you can read through the different um, 
uh, sub-criteria requirements, evidence to demonstrate the distinguished, distinguished reputation of the organizations, documentary evidence to demonstrate how your role uh, is leading or critical, or was leading or critical for the organization. Uh, next, evidence that you command a high salary or enumeration in relation to others in the field. So you want to provide proof of your actual um, compensation. And then uh, there, are, there are different um, sources for average wage data based on occupation. And if you can prove that your salary is well above the 90th percentile, then you can qualify. Again, there are different compensation surveys available that you can use. So if you feel like uh, you qualify under this uh, criteria, it's not that difficult, difficult to provide evidence. And finally, if you are a performing artist and you can provide evidence of your commercial success in the performing arts, this is a good criteria for you. Uh, box office receipts uh, for uh, movie um, artists, sales receipts uh, for audio video artists, and website links uh, pointing to the evidence. So that's a kind of a quick overview. Feel free to uh, use this, to share this. If you have any comments, uh, please let us know in the comments below. If you like this, please like it so the algorithm knows that it was helpful. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.